Hi. Good evening. Hi, Gabby. How are you doing? Hi. You're looking radiant like awesome. it's morning. Are you sure you want to hear You really don't want to hear the backstory. <laughs> So how are you doing? It's really nice That's seeing awesome. your face. I know it's good to see you too. I'm trying to um share the link. Oh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Go ahead. All right, all right. I'll wait. So usually I go live, the pre-recording, I record, some people join, and then I put it up on my channel so people get to watch it, you know, every day. Okay, okay, okay. makes sense. Um, yeah. All right, thanks. So, we can go. Gaminola, the yeah. Niger Money Babe. I love your brand name, the Niger <laughs> Money Babe. I'm super excited. <laughs> I can't wait to hear all you have to, you know. Uh, tell us this. So maybe first of all, before I go into the introduction, maybe you should introduce yourself. Tell us a little hmm. bit about yourself. Hmm. All right. Um, so my name is Dami, Dami Lala Dami. But I'll, I love to be called Billionaire Dami. It's like an affirmation for me. So yeah. <laughs> Billionaire Dami. <laughs> Billionaire <also> Joy. <laughs> That was a follow. That was a big. So I'm the convener of um, Niger Money Babe. Uh, I also am a credit analyst. Like I have, I've had credit and risk management experience for yeah. about ten years now. And I recently just registered and got my license for my own cooperative, soon to be a microfinance. It's called, yes, it's called Street Trips and Way to go. <laughs> Way yeah, to so go. Basically, that's me. And I love, I love money. I love money. I love money talks. I love to learn, to know more about money. Because I've hit, I've made a lot of money mistakes. A lot. And that yeah, was what I, yeah, actually I brought both. about Niger Money Babe. <laughs> that's what brought about Niger Money Babe. I, I, you know, I made a lot of. A lot of just silly decisions, money wise, finance wise, and I just thought to be sharing my. If you know, if you check my posts, you see most of it that my yes. personal, yeah, experience uh, with uh, money. personal experiences. Yeah, exactly. And I just, I have, and I, I, I thought I was telling people so they could learn from me. Like I just wanted somebody to know that okay, you're not the only person going through this thing, and yeah. this was how I did it and how I came out of it, and that was how I started with the Nigerian money thing. You know yeah. something? Mm. It's perfect because my this this my 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 channel is about telling our stories. I believe our stories are our greatest message, and the way people learn is from the experiences that we share. Because yeah. our, our stories are not us to keep. When we share those experiences, people use it to learn, you know, learn, and navigate yeah. their own so way. They can easily relate. Know. True life. Now, now I kept saying throughout today that this particular episode was very important and very dear to me. I was looking forward to it because I have made a lot of money mistakes myself. And I'm so um, excited that I can actually confidently say now that, you know, I've been able to navigate my way out of, you know, um, those mistakes. Uh, one of them was getting into loan app, sh uh, loan app Sharks, I mean, loan sharks, and loan app, whatever. I'm sure some people that watch this will be shocked that, eh? Joy also, yes, joy also. And honestly, it was like a confinement. It was like a prison for but you don't see your money. You know, yeah. I, I think there was a time I had to um, print my bank statement because I needed to use it for something. And my God, I don't want to call the money out here. But if you see the money that passed through my account, it's in six figures and double digital. It's not one digit. And I cannot okay. account. I, mean, I did not see it. I was making money for, you know, so, so, but I was able to, you know, I, I really didn't have, you know, someone to, you know, teach me or get me through it or something. But I, yeah. I, I told myself that I needed to, I gave myself a reality check and I said, you know what? I, 
this is not right. You know, well, I prayed. Prayer is part of it, so apart from the fact that I had to do take some conscious decisions and I was able yeah. to navigate my way out of it. And then secondly, the reason why I'm excited about this is the fact that a lot of us have very talented, very skilled. Mm -hmm. um, we have a great ideas. We're running good businesses, but we haven't been able to turn it into profit. You know, a lot of people are not able to turn their work into profit you they, they can't we can't get our money to work for us you understand and yeah and i, I think it's a big deal because mm -hmm. i before i there's something i used to say years ago that i used to say that i'm i'm an i'm, I'm an impact oriented person really that's what i am i love to make impact that i think of i'm impact for profit but i found out that there's error in that statement you can't just be impact oriented and not profit oriented it doesn't work know, that way yeah. there's no yeah. there's no it, there's no balance there's no completion completion yeah. you should be able to make impact and also make a profit at the profit. same time so mm -hmm. so what's mm -hmm. your story with money how did you get here what's your story with money please share with us um okay so uh I, I, okay, maybe I, let me say I have like two parts to it. Firstly, okay. I have from people's because of um, the kind of job I've I've been at, I've worked, I've, I've always worked in the finance sector in credit and loans, like mm. major part of my life. So because of that, I was able to see, you know, we get customers that come in and there's the form you fill and you have to write purpose for your loan. And you know, then way back, I used to say things like. Um, for school, for wedding, vacation, for burial, vacation, you know, and do you, yeah, so I, I then, and the money I will not come back. Why will somebody borrow money? And, you know, and for us, loan sharks, as they call us, the rate is high. Even we that work there, we know that that rate is high. And we were like, ah, me, to me, I'm like, why would you borrow money for, or, Borrow money to buy a car that is not that you're using the car for business, you know, you're business. Just buying a car. So that, okay, that house oh, yes, I, I, I get to meet, I got to meet a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. But personally, hmm, you think that me working in places like this will make me have sense, common sense. <laughs> so uh personally, you know, after getting money working, you know, you get your salaries and all that. And at the point that you're like, I was always getting my salary, yes, but I was always borrowing. I was always like, before salary is done, in fact, as salary is entering, I've already borrowed times two of my salary. So, like, I was living way above my means. I, I did not realize it until the day, one day. You know, there's always one day, and you're like, ah, what is this going on? And then I had to check. Okay, and then one of the turning points was when I read um, Smart Money Woman book about, you know, checking your statements. Um, yeah, I, I watched the, the, the movie instead. Mm. So I did. Oh, okay. I, I read the first book. And I did that. I, I actually printed my like six month statement then, like just six months. And I wanted to just cry. Like, I, I was just spending money on nonsense. Things nonsense. That, that didn't make sense. They did not add <laughs> to me. You guess. So at that point, I knew that ah, it, I have to take charge of my life because I was doing a lot of people. I did not have anything to show for what I owe, what I'm owing money for. You know, it's different. There's a difference if you borrow money for businesses. Although, yeah, there were times I borrowed money for business as well that kind of did not go as planned. Maybe it's not being I mean, it happens. So it, it happens. Yeah. Failure is bound to happen. You know, money. something. Other part of it, just borrow money. Borrow money to buy a baby. Borrow money to go buy clothes. So go on holiday. <laughs> Do you get like just? Unnecessary things, and you know that was. So I had that turning point, and I'm like, ah, no, 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 no. So the first thing I had to learn was even saying no, no, no. If you invite me, if it's something I cannot do, no, ah, no, I don't even want you to give you the reason. No, I'm sorry, I cannot make it. I can't make it, you know. But um, I think that's been that's been about six years or five years now, and it's been getting better. I'm not like hundred percent perfect in this savings and budgeting and money part, but I'm a lot better now. I, I won't borrow money for necessary things. In fact, I've now before now I had or right I've always had friends, you know, that sell things that sell things. And I'll just be like, let me pick this up, let me pick this up, I'll pay you later. You know, I realize that because you know exactly you 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 don't think about exactly 
no, no. So, so that's like, yeah, those were like the things that happened, and I'm like, ah, no, I can't be living my life like this. I have to, you know, do better. So, um, first things first, I had to learn to say, ah, no, I'm sorry, no, I can't do this, or I don't. In fact, I disciplined myself so bad that there was a day that I was in the mall with my cousin, one of my cousins, with at the mall, and you know, she was like, oh, let her buy this, and I didn't buy anything, and I even had money that day. And she was like, oh, that she didn't know. She does not understand how somebody can enter a place like this and you have money, but you will not buy something. How did I get to that stage? I'm like, ah, even me, I don't know. But I, because now I, I'm also learning to weigh needs and wants. Exactly. You have to know why your needs. Need. Is it like, and your is it, why need it, need it, need it? Not even just need it. Why need it, need it, need it? So, you know, by the time I go, I think about it. I won't just buy something on impulse again now. Before I buy something now, I was have thought about it like several times, you know. If I see your hair and I'm like, ah, I like this hair. I can start thinking of it, thinking. Then I start thinking. Plan to us it. Yes. So I started doing my needs and one thing, table like, ah, okay, this one, I need it. Oh, this one, it can wait. Then another thing I started doing again was, because I'm a serial entrepreneur, there's almost no business I'm not doing. Like people that know me, mm. there's almost no business. Name it. That I've not done. So what I started doing again is if I know that I would need some money, maybe like say I want to buy hair, you know, I want to buy something that has that is like a huge sum, I would think of something, I'll think of a business <laughs> that I can quickly start to raise that money that I need. So that's something I've been doing like over time. I'll think of something I'll do, sell, buy something, if it's for me to learn a skill, just so I can get that money to um buy what i want to buy i will do it and yeah so you project us come up with so many things yeah basically that now one of the things i i from my experience i i understood was well, one of the things i feel leads us into debt or or unnecessary spending is both fear and impatience that's from my personal experience sometimes you're scared or you're afraid you're going to miss a deadline or you're going to be embarrassed, or you're going to get into trouble, or you're going to mm-hmm. lose something. So you mm-hmm. you make um, fear-based decisions, which always are very silly decisions that get you into trouble. You understand? So I made when you make a lot of decisions based on fear, impatience, uh, in discipline, I noticed you mentioned that, which is true, when you're not disciplined, when you don't know when to say no. Self-care is being able to say no. You understand? You have a friend, she's telling something. Yes, she's your friend. You feel, oh, I can take it and pay. And, but it even ruins friendship. Because you don't pay. It not becomes an easy It's like you're taking your friend's business for granted. God bless for good granted. friends that don't throw us away. Yeah. You understand? But it looks like you're taking your friend for granted. And then the next thing, because your friend's business is suffering, you're not paying what you owe. You didn't have the money. You didn't plan. You bought. In fact, your friend would have appreciated you more if you didn't buy. And you waited yeah. until you had the money, you know, to buy <laughs> what you wanted to, to buy. Okay, so let me ask you a question now. What, mm-hmm. to you, what does financial intelligence mean? What does it mean for somebody to be financially intelligent? You know? come across um, to you. So for me, simple, just in simple terms, for me, I'll say to be financially intelligent is to know everything about your finances, anything and everything about it. That is knowing where your money comes from, knowing where your money goes into so that you're not lost. That's the simple way, simplest way I can say that, I can define it. And that's how I say it. Financial mm. interest, you just know, knowing where your money is coming from, Knowing where your money is going into. So that way you will know how many income streams you have or you should have. So you can balance your um your expenses and have a good lifestyle. You know, based on your lifestyle, you know, okay, I'm a big girl, baby girl for life. Maybe I should have like five streams of income and all those things, mm. you know, legit. That you know, so that's basically financial just for me. Knowing where yeah. your money is coming from and knowing where you're going into. to know where your money comes from, how you manage your money, what you invest your money in, yeah. understanding yeah. the psychology of money. I've not read that book. I know there's a book called Psychology of Money. I've been trying to read it, but I haven't come I, around to it. I started it, but I've not finished. <laughs> okay, okay. So maybe I, I'm yeah. going to have to get on too, sorry. Okay, so 
people have a lot of misconceptions about money. Like the one I told you first, I said, I used to say I'm impact oriented. I'm an impact oriented person. I'm not about money. Yeah. I know the money will come. That was yeah. not a very intentional thing to be saying. One day I sat and I said, Joy, you have been, you are the village people that have been pursuing yourself. How can you just be saying, I'm just impact oriented. I'm not profit oriented. So I started affirming. Every day I say the affirmations, I am a profit oriented person. And I saw that things just took a drastic turn. You understand? Because the truth is, whatever gift you have will make money for you if you're intentional about turning mm -hmm. it to money. So mm -hmm. I know people have some misconceptions about money and even misconceptions about investing money. Because one of the things I see is, you see what you said about when you need to buy something, you quickly uh, look for a business to put money into. Most times, what we do is put them into Ponzi schemes. Oh, if you bring a uh, hundred thousand every day, you, need to you know, those uh, before, you know, they, they've cracked the website. Before you know, they say they're paying out again. You see other people that have earned from it. You see, you're going to put your money there because you're looking for the faster way to, to make yeah. money, you know, or, or you go and join, uh, you know, well, Ponzi, MMM, all of them are, are, are Ponzi schemes. So, so anyway, what are some of the misconceptions people have about money? What are some of the common mistakes people make about money and investment? Hmm. Number one common mistake. Everything I'm going to say is going to be based on my own personal experience. Number one oh. common mistake is um, spending money before you, act, you have the actual money. Spending money, uh, how do I put this? You I know, used to so be guilty. <laughs> so I used to be guilty. I used to spend fake money. Fake money. <laughs> <laughs> so you spend it down before the money comes and that's what makes businesses to go to also run down you know because we have this expected with this expectation of uh what the profit should be like what your income should be like from your business and then you just so as the money is coming you're just spending spending you're not thinking oh they're supposed to put this money back into the business you're going to supposed to reinvest you know and all of that so that and when you get to that stage there's no how you will go and borrow, you have to go into debt so you can balance them. There's no how. So that's one. Um, another misconception about money will be uh oh, now that you're asking me this jump question is leaving my head. <laughs> another, <laughs> thing, another misconception will be not um not being truthful with ourselves because sometimes you you know yourself, you know your income, you know your net worth, you know yourself. But well, maybe pressure, societal pressure, you want to impress. Societal, you want to impress well, other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Maybe societal pressure. So or yes, even emotional spending. Also, Some people, when they are depressed, they want to go shopping. Emotional spending. Sis, you are there. You are there. <laughs> no, so, oh no, emotional spending. Ah! Oh, Jesus, that was another level. But um, so part of the misconception is just um. So first, I said it's not not knowing your exact state of network. Your network, people don't know their network. People don't even know. Like people just people need to know what what, what um their network. I don't know how to explain it. They need to know um like this is how much I earn. This is how much I have to spend. And this is how much I, that is left. What is left is what I can say, okay, this is me. So that in case of emergency and all that, you know that this is the side you pay or somewhere. This is the only money I have in this life. And hey, you know that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, people, mm -hmm. need to know. people don't always know their network. They just live on assumptions. That's that's a misconception as well. Um, I don't know. Maybe as you talk, it'll keep coming to so my head. No, no, it's, it's fine. So, so tell me, what are the various ways for people that are looking for how to create wealth, to make money? You know, you want to make money and you don't know how to go about it. There might be opportunities around that a lot of people don't know. What are those opportunities around us that we are, we are overlooking? And you know, we are all in different industries. So what might work for one person might not work yeah. for another, but what are the opportunities? What are the options we have when it comes to, mm -hmm. you know, Please creating? I mean, anything. Okay, so okay. Um, opportunities. First of all, I'll start with people. People need to learn new skills, especially in this new 
age that we are in right now. People need to mm. learn new skills. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to cut you. Uh, sorry, I'm going to cut you short. What are some okay. of those skills? Just, you know, what are some of those skills that you feel are very marketable now? And it's easy for people to invest in learning, either, you know, financially mm. or some of them you can even, you know, um, learn from. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so for the skills, um, I will first of all say, digital marketing is it anything digital marketing those seos all those anything digital digital that like the, the world we're at now is social media social media so you have to learn that mm-hmm. digital marketing skill if you have a flair for that even if you don't even have flair because I've, right now i know that there's, it's not by passion to make money it's by just if you are hungry enough to make money you make money then go to is not passionate about you want it bad enough you get if you want to bad enough, you you learn. So social media, digital marketing skills. There's this new one. These all those um, AI, AI, yeah. all those uh, chats. You know, there, people Chat are now GPT. learning how to. Yes, people are now learning to, how to to, um, to put the prompts. You know, there's a way. There are ways to put the prompts. Those AIs. If you if you just write, uh, uh, give me. I noticed it's a big deal. There's a way mm. there's like the language for all these AIs. If you write something, you can say something like in five uh in five words, not less than 50, uh, in five points, or create five points in not less than 50 words, um, how to make money in Nigeria, blah blah blah. Then you can write things like make it um um, using a friendly but bold or firm tone, you know, there are ways to put these things, and these are yeah. easy things. These are easy things to learn. Funny enough, they are trying to, to, to make us writers go extinct, but you see, AI but cannot have emotions. AI actually, cannot have emotions, so they still need us. <laughs> Robots can't really replace humans, as, like I say, because I know, I know, I'm just joking. We use it, it makes our work easier. It's make your work, yes, it make your job yeah, easier. Yeah, work easier. It's mm-hmm. your skill. People will still look for you, not robots. Because right now, it's not everybody that can even afford all these things. There are some AI thing apps. I think you have to even pay and all that. So learn digital marketing. This um, business AI, analysis. Yes. Cloud so, um, computing. Copywriting. 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 Yes. Then there's some. I think there's some entrepreneurial skills to learn. If you're going into entrepreneurship line, because a lot of us in Nigeria, I will use Nigeria as well because that's where I know we know ourselves. We just jump into any business. We just wake up like this and say, mm, uh, I, I want to start mixing cream. cream. I want to start mixing cream. <laughs> I want to cook rice. I can cook rice. I, I, want start to, I can cook rice. Open an Instagram page of, and start serving people uh, rice. Open, exactly. So we don't think of all the other things that go into it. These are, I think, things. There are some entrepreneurial skills to learn, and they are cheap. If you search for them, they are cheap. They are easy. They are not time consuming. consuming. In fact, I, I time, yes. that we can never go wrong with um, learning skills that has to do with human basic needs. You know, food, shelter, clothing. You know, I feel like all those necessities. Mm-hmm. Like learn skills yeah. that. And if you mm. want to start any business or you want to go into, you need any side hustle. The first things first. Think of basic needs. Basic needs: food, clothing, um, shelter. Think of basic needs. Communication. Because communication, data. Hey, yeah, because data. These, these are things that nowadays people can't people live can't without, live without. People cannot live without food. You can even um, 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 clothes. Clothes. A lot of people are selling as high as as expensive as some clothes are. People are selling. People are buying clothes. Brand. <laughs> I'm telling you, they are luxury brands. So the, that's another aspect. You know, is after you pick your business, then you now pick a niche. No, if you want to do luxury, you want to be in the middle. You want to just go all the way to the masses. See thrift. Thrift is now blooming everywhere. Everywhere. You know what thrift? Thrift is Africana. We just decided to fortify it. So like. Um, that's those are the things I think. But if, if you learn entrepreneurial skills, you get some of this. Yeah, stuff. and and um, um, digital skills, being that yeah. way, digital age. Yes, yeah, 
then which one else? Um, website so, so, designing. Okay, website designing, graphic website designing. designing, graphic designing, graphic design. Graphic designing is a hot cake. I don't know why people are... No, but people are doing it themselves now, now. There are apps you can download on your phone and design your stuff yourself. Well, I do my things myself, but it's hot yeah. cake. Because there are still a lot of people that they don't know how to do it. There are a lot of people that know how to do it, but they don't have time. And will gladly pay so they someone else to do this. Do you get, and and so this is... Um, I, let me give you an example. My office needed um, a graphic designer and someone introduced me to someone and I, you know, I engaged the person and, oh. and I noticed that he's not been consistent with his post, with his designs. Like he's supposed to, I think, do five per week or three per week or something. But he doesn't do it until someone sends a reminder to him and all that. And I had a talk with him one day, like, what's up? Is it that you don't know what to post and all that? Or what is it? What's the problem? What's the challenge? And this guy told me that he, he doesn't know what to design. But he said he's a graphic designer. He, so he now, only has the skill, but, but he's not developed his creative ability to be able to so make himself he, valuable. He, he has only done, he has only worked with maybe real estate companies and something else, or be an engineer. So he doesn't know anything about finance. And I just, I was, I, I cringed because why should you tell somebody that, oh, you don't, and you have been paid, though. And you're telling me now, you don't know how to do this. I'm like, so am I supposed to go and read up for you? Do research. Because they're not thing, trying to they're not trying to apply them themselves. Code. I will go on Google Live Coach Design. I'll see different things. I'll see how to make your work and all that. But do you get so why would somebody tell me that so people are just lazy, shall but yeah, they should learn to develop skills, learn skills and develop skills. Any skills. other one I remember. Okay, so 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 now with investments, what are the investments out there that even the person that does not have millions, millions, millions can decide to invest in and grow their money? What are the options when it comes to investments so that we don't go and put our money in Ponzi Ponzi scheme? Investments. I, I just I just started a series on my page, and I was just talking about oh. And I'm surprised that people don't know gold. about gold. Gold, gold jewelry. So, so gold. if you say gold, now you mean buying the jewelry or buying the or buying the gold <laughs> or buying the gold? <laughs> there. What do you call that thing? What do you call it, sir? Gold bar. Gold bar. <laughs> or the jewelry? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the jewelry. Our okay. mothers did this way back. I don't know if people, if you remember, but we had mothers that. When there was issues, when they had, when they needed funds, you go and sell the, the yes, and go and sell. That only just tells you that if you buy chain, just chain now. If let's assume you bought it hundred thousand, and you need to sell it maybe by December or whenever, I can it, have gone. it should have gone up. And I knew this is way back when I was in school undergrad days. We used to buy. It. So now let me give you an example. Then, back then, we used to buy gold for like one something. Two, five, two, two five, five, three thousand. Two K. So let's say maybe two K per a gram. Thereabout. And now, now, as I yes, forty something, today, forty something thousand, forty-three thousand per <laughs> gram. <laughs> so do you, do you get so that way? I'll say, I, I was telling them gold because uh, first of all, you can use it. You know, it's your own. It's, there's no third party in it. There's no, uh, you're giving money to somebody to keep it. You know, you can use mm. it. You can keep it. Yeah. You can, you, I, I think then, I don't know now, but I know then there used to be banks that you can keep your jewelry in if, if it's worth it and all that. But, you know, there are just so many things. And anytime you can wake up tomorrow morning and go there and say, I want to sell this thing, you will get your cash back immediately. You won't make a loss. You can only is either you don't you don't make a profit and just get your exact money back, which is slim. You know, the chance of that is very slim. Or but you won't make a loss. Mm. Even if it's broken, if you go with maybe the hook, the earring hook is broken, something you take it back to them. Still valuable, yeah, because they can melt it and do something else with it. It's still valuable. So for me, and it's, it's I would say is is um is affordable to start. If, you know, if you want, if, 
like I said, it's about 40, 41, 45,000 pounds now. Yes. So if um, uh, the minimum, if you want to get something very tiny, you know, those very small ones, maybe that should weigh maybe like, let's assume two grams. Two, two grams. So you're still spending maybe. less than 100,000 for your first investment. You know, so you can have that. You can keep it. You can use it. You can do whatever with it. And no. So now I, mean, I even learned this. That I have a friend. I have some friends. What they do when they get extra cash, they just go and buy gold. Before I used to be like, uh, why you but they buy gold, just keep it because they say if they have money, if they don't buy it, they'll spend it on what they can account for. And whenever mm. they need it, some there's even one that once she needs money for anything for a project, for instance, she'll try to get money to go and buy gold first and keep when it's time for the project to start, she'll sell, she'll sell her gold and transfer. So gold for me, I'll say yes, and it's affordable. Another thing that I don't, I, I won't really say affordable is affordable is relevant in this case is land. Yes, land, land, land is land. an investment you can never go wrong with. But you can people can people you can start with buying smaller ones on the outskirts. You don't have to buy. Yeah, yeah, you know. exactly. So yes, as I said, it's it's, re, it's relative. Affordable is relative. Land you mm. can't go wrong with land. In fact, what I even know now about land, you can buy land. And start farming on it because agriculture, agriculture is another money spinner. Mm. If you can get it right, you can do animal, um, animal husbandry, the animal farm. Husbandry, yes, yeah, animal husbandry. Yeah, or you can. No, do, by, by, I know. Anybody that knows that we're operating <laughs> from Nigeria knows that Nepa will do his I thing. Do. So just go ahead. <laughs> All right. So you can do farm. You can farm on the land. Or, you know, you can do anything or you can you just leave it. It's so appreciate regardless. regardless. As long as you bought it through the right channel. Because if you don't mm. want to do the right channel, you will lose everything. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so Some people do land, land banking. They call it land banking. Where they buy land, they leave it for two, three years. When it appreciates, they it. sell it and go and buy in Present. a, you know. Present. Present. Ah, okay. Present. You see? <laughs> you see? <laughs> yeah. There are some yeah, there are some organizations that even do it for you. You buy from them. Okay. When you already okay. sell, they will help you to sell it. Maybe you just give them like a small percentage, but they will help oh. you to sell it. Then you you know ah, there's so many things. Then what else? What else can I think? I think those two for me and agriculture, anything agriculture from the production to the packaging to any part of agriculture you can invest in. So, so what do you think about all the Bitcoin, the NIFT? Is this something you advise people to go into? Do you think it's stable enough for people to risk their money in? Well, my name is Billionaire Dami. It's an affirmation. I've not yet gotten those billion, billion. So I like to put my money where I can easily see it, where I can touch it, where I can move it. Yes, because this digital know. money can disappear at any time. <laughs> ah, I don't know. You know, there was a time that the thing crashed. That, you know, people were almost they run into depression. I feel, I feel like there's too much going on in Nigeria for me to be adding that one. As, as this. So for me, me, I don't. I know people are investing in all those coins. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think if you know money. how to go about it, even the forex trading, the uh, yeah, NIFT, I know the NIFT thing is... You have to know what NFT. you're doing for your Mm. NFC. I don't know about it, but for people that know about uh, it, NFT, I no, it, that's the, the, it's when you do like original um artwork or pictures and all that, yeah, and then they sell them or, online. I, I think um uh, I think it's more of a Gen Z or millennial thing. But anyway, we're, we're looking at we're looking at handy ways to do investments with your small money and then watch it grow for you. So yeah, yeah, um, yes, yes, yes. You know, like you said, apply, acquiring skill. If you apply digital, if you if you learn how to trade forex or learn how to trade yeah, Bitcoin, they have true. courses, yeah. and you're good yeah. at it. Then, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Then you can, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead and, and 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 do it. So, if somebody now, let's look at loans again because the truth of the matter is that if you're an entrepreneur or a business person, at some point you will take loans. You will need loans. Even the big companies but you take you loans. You know yeah, to run their business. businesses. So, what are the things to look out for when you want to take a loan? One, what kind of loans should you not take? And then, if you're going to take a loan, what are the red flags that uh, uh, 
when this, this, this is, I shouldn't take this kind of loan. It will put me in trouble. And then when should someone take a loan? And what type of loan? What are the interests? You know, just walk us through, you know. Um, so, I, again, the whole loan thing. So, I will say that it's different from um, for individuals and for a business. For individual, if you want to take loan, why do you want to take loan? You have to, for, I, I, would always, I would always advise and suggest take loans for what you can multiply for businesses, for instance. Not for yeah. things that you just for not for frivolity, you know. Or things that are not going to bring back returns. Bring back anything? Yes, I won't advise you take loan for burial, for wedding. In fact, we had I, I, I've had some customers. I have had like two customers that borrowed took loan for wedding, and the wedding eventually crashed. Like, and they had not finished the loan. Aha. Then you're not so the struggling who will take the loan. Is it the man? Is it the woman now that the wedding has got that? So, so there are some things that you should have a strong reason why you want to borrow money. Why? Mm. And um, that's for individuals. Um, also for businesses, before you take a loan, what stage is your business at? Don't take 100% loan to start your business. Do you understand what I mean? So, like, if you need hundred thousand for your to start a business, don't go and collect loan of hundred thousand. At least have seventy percent. Have an equity that you are contributing and, to that. Yeah. Yes, because if not, it will just look like you are only working for the loan company. That's as for a business on the business level now, as an entrepreneur. Um, let me see what else things to look out for, right? Since to look out for before getting loan, don't go and get all these loans. Sharp, 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 sharp. Click here to get two hundred k in ten minutes. The and then you not pay back one fifty thousand in seven days. Their rate is usually extremely high, extremely high. That's one. Secondly, they are the ones that will send your pictures and your video and everything to all your contacts. You contacts. know, and that's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. when you think that sounds too juicy, I think it's better. We read through, read through every T and T, read through anything before you click, before you apply physically. And also the length, the length of time. I'm sure the length of time you're taking the loan, that you're, you're being yes, the yes, phone, the payment. For, for business loans, you should look for loans that the repayment is flexible. So it's just, there's a downside to it. The longer it is, the more money you're going to be paying eventually. But it may be convenient, so that's and but that's one way to look at it. But if you're able to, so so know, from what you're saying, sorry, my darling, from what you're saying, it means that if you are doing a business that you need it, that it takes long term for you to receive return on investment, the loan is not a wise decision to make. Yeah, yes. it's better take but loans when you know that the return on investment is within a short period of time. Yes. Mean, Especially if you're just starting, because you don't even know if this business will fail or not. You don't know. You don't know anything about the business. A lot of us start, like we said earlier, a lot of us just start this business and we, do, we have no idea, we just go into it. So you don't know if it will fail and then you'd have borrowed money from everybody and everywhere. So yeah, taking loans and then, um, or not just loans, going into partnerships. You know, there's some partnerships, they don't call it loan, but they'll be like, uh, yeah, you're an investor. They are investing. Kind of this thing. The the T and C is if the rate is too high, <clears throat> there may there will definitely be a problem if the rate is too high. If the um, tenor is not flexible, if the what the investor is requesting of you, apart from the payment, you know, is you think it's too much, then it's too much. You know, there are some investors that will say, Oh, if you don't make part this payment or something, we'll get the car back or we'll get your business. Or we'll get uh, maybe 70% of your business, things like that. You end up most that puts your business at risk. At risk, yes. And then you now always be working under pressure. That alone will not let you focus on your business because you'll be working under pressure. You'll be like, hey, I don't want to fail this person. I don't want this person to do this. I don't want this. And so that way, um, that will not, may not necessarily work. But if you get a good loan with good rate, um flexible repayment plan um please hold on i need to turn up my ac for this gen it's up 
Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, so, uh, so I think basically, I think it even works both ways for both um, individuals and business owners, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, if your business is has long term turnover, avoid taking loans as much as possible. Maybe we have to. You have to take loans that the interests are, you know, very, yeah. very little. You know. Very um, okay. So, so now, Niger Money Babe, what yeah. does your brand do, and what are the services that, or yeah, services that you offer? or advice that you offer to clients? What do you offer as a brand? What is Niger Money Babe Niger about? Niger Money Babe. So Niger Money Babe was uh, born out of trying to help women, ladies like me, to have a different mindset about money, you know? And that was, that's like the main aim. That's the main point. I'll, I just want people to have a different mindset about money mm. a lot of women a lot of girls ladies we don't it's the men that you know they have one strict mindset on money and they know about money we don't really know we don't even care there are a lot of people that don't even care they don't want to know anything about how the money is coming away how it's going and that's what makes that's how what pushes or makes some people go into the wrong things you know do illegal things so that's basically how, what i want to achieve to help young ladies like me, to change their mindset about money. Set up money. Mindset. Yes. And um, so services that we'll be having, that we'll be offering soon. Um, I want to, I'm, I'm, part of money mindset is to encourage people to learn how to save. But not just saving, because I realize now a lot of people save. Now we have at least a large percentage of women, they now save. But they don't have goals for these savings. They just save. What are you saving for? I'm just saving because I'm saving. So I'm I'm teaching people how to have target savings. Attach your savings to something. What are you saving for? I'm saving target to travel. Savings. Yes, I'm saving to buy a car. I'm saving to um, start yeah, a business. I'm I'm start saving. Business. Do you, so that's it. So that's where I'm going into and. Um, since I started talking about this, there are some real estate companies that have been reaching out because me, I wrote my post, I wrote my goal for my for the quarter, I think. And <laughs> I wrote some goals and things I wanted to achieve, you know, and had land and properties in it. And some I've two, yeah, about two different real estate companies have um, approached me on how they can partner with us and help young ladies to achieve their goals, their real estate goals. So but we're still in talks with that. But then again, my the plan of Niger brand, Niger Money Bay, is just to bring in opportunities, as many opportunities as I can, share job opportunities, um, savings opportunities, investment opportunities, how you do it, you know, just to guide people. And eventually, I would love to have my own bank. Five-year plan. Five-year plan. Five-year plan. <laughs> and I was just about to ask you, you just took it out of my mouth. I was just that's about to ask you about the five-year plan, and then you just and, said you it. Know, it's going to be, it's not going to be banking as usual. It's going to be something different, not just the usual bank. Do you want to share, do you want to share a sneak peek with us? Or maybe if you share a sneak peek, now somebody will come and steal this our idea. But that I should leave it to you. I'm still cooking it in my head, as I say. Like I have this book, but my okay. So let's see. Let it cook in your head. Let it cook in your head when it's done. No, let it cook in your head when it's done. We we'll hear about it. Okay, so yeah, for people, exactly. And like I said earlier, oh yes, you said so. So, so like, how how do you intend to use that now? How do, how is that yeah. going to work? You're going to start getting people to say, how are you going to you know how is the cooperative going to work? Okay, so the cooperative, um, the plan is I want to try to speak with um, some banks, approach some banks on how we can run partnership because I would like to have like a bank custodian of the cooperative. So if someone um, saves money with us or investment opportunity and we have to like save money with um, our organization straight, straight, you will be rest assured that it has a bank 
custodian, you know, you know that okay, I can't run away or your money will not. Yes, yeah, so you have like a, a bank back, a commercial bank back in your commercial bank. Yes, I'm trying to get a commercial bank to back us up, and it's just gradual, but but getting there. Yeah, and I'm I'm super proud of of what you're doing and what you intend to achieve, because the financial part of a woman's life. Let me narrow it down to a woman now. We, by the way, every anybody's life is one of the most integral yeah. part because mm-hmm. money answers all things. With you, money is a tool. It's a tool that yeah. we use to achieve so much. You want to do this? Money is what you get you from point A to you know point B. So, and it's important to know mm-hmm. how to make that money work for you. So, yeah. babe, now I'm going to ask, there, there are a lot of people who are dealing with debt everywhere now. A lot of people are dealing with it. Um, I think it, it went on the high after the COVID lockdown. And a lot of people are dealing, there's hardly anybody you meet who won't tell you that um, they are owing one. Um, yes. Or the other. yes, a lot of people are dealing with debt. And, and, you know, for people who aren't, I'm always like, you know, um, Way back then, I'll just look at them and go like, oh, it takes a lot of discipline. But now somehow I carry my shoulder, you know, when I feel like I'm part of this, you know, this <laughs> elite click, you know. Anyway, so so what do you what what would you what would you advise? What is the best way for them to navigate their way out of this situation? For me, I had to discipline, I had to sit down and advise myself. And then I now had to apply some measures in my life, I had to cut out some things for a while. I had to make myself uncomfortable for a while. I had to disappear. I had to shut down everything and everyone and make sure that I navigated my way out of that situation before I came back and, you know, started functioning. In fact, after I came out of that situation, I didn't feel like working for like almost three weeks or a month. I was just, you know, yeah, so at peace. I just want to wake up and sleep. Wake up and sleep. <laughs> You understand? I didn't feel yeah. like, and I, I was not getting worried. I said, ah, ah, it's like this thing was a motivation because now I feel like there's no motivation again. And I said, please, if that's the only motivation, I should go. I don't need it. But in any case, people who are dealing with this situation right now, what would you advise them? What are those quick steps you can give them to be able to navigate their way out of? So, quick steps. Quick steps. Number one, um, get the truth. debt. Have a true picture of it. Um, secondly, go to the people, the companies, organizations, individuals that you're going. Everybody, calm down. Go to them. Talk to them. Have a conversation. Um, let them have a conversation with them on how they can um, allow you to arrange a, pay, a flexible way to pay back. Yes, so they can re, yes, they can re, uh, there's a word we call it restructure it they can restructure it for you ask for your structure plan if that works congratulations most times but what if, what if it's those people that will be calling you we're going to call your contact we're going to call your contact what will you do those ones don't, don't restructure uh, no you can still approach them i'm sure if you approach them for a restructure because the truth is nobody wants no even those people that say oh, we're going to call you i'm calling you from somewhere we'll call all your family members it's not they know that they will lose their money, so they want to. <laughs> yeah. So anything that guarantees bringing the money back, I'm sure they will. Uh, they will accept it. They will to it. You have to give cogent reasons why you need the restructure, because you cannot just wake up and say, hey, "Because I know I can restructure, I want to go to one side." But you have to have like real reasons. It has to be good reasons. Then, um, uh, so what else can you do? Then on your own path. The individual needs to learn to cut, remove anything that is not basic from your life, any expense that's not basic. When I, I when I did this, I stopped um, paying all those sub- subscriptions. I canceled everything: Netflix, Go TV, DSTV, anything I have to do with Netflix. It was I think the thing I was doing was data. I went to my Apple account, that account. I cancelled all gotcha. those subscriptions. You know, there are some subscriptions you just put. Yeah. You just need one, two, one, five, one, eight. I removed all, everything. That was when I knew that. I share all these things. It's not. The adults are spending so much level. money. You get it? Yeah. And I remember I didn't, I didn't subscribe my TV for, I think, close to a year. 
And that has actually helped me because now my TV is almost always on. I, I recently started subscribing and I don't even remember to put it on because I'm, I'm, I don't, it's not like we even watch this thing. The Netflix, if you if you subscribe one month, you can watch, you can catch up on everything and wait again, you know, before new movies come in and all that. So then um your um food for people like me that like to eat out a lot. That was a big deal for me. I have to. It's very expensive. Eat. I have to come. But well, you calculate what yeah. you spend on eating out. That's right now that the price of um, food in restaurants has uh, have really gone up. It's yeah, very expensive. Yeah. So mm. yeah. So you have to change. Have a complete change in lifestyle. Yeah. Trim. Like, trim your lifestyle, um, lifestyle until you are out of yeah. debt. Yeah. Um. People that uh, say they can't do without not going to the gym. You can do your exercises. Your Jog house. on the road. Yeah. You start walking on the road. Or, or there, there yeah. are apps on YouTube. YouTube videos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube videos. So and if you cannot even watch anything, you don't have to say, I can't do anything. Be walking. Take a walk. 30 minutes walk every day. Oh. You, yeah. This will do something for you. So I'm just, so the basic thing is you have to change your lifestyle to fit into your situation. Accept it. That, oh, okay. yes, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work on this. Then put a timeline to your debt plan. There should be a timeline. Um, okay, I have a total debt of one million. I would like to mm. finish paying up this debt in 12 months, in 24 months, but it has to be realistic because if not, you put yourself under unnecessary pressure. So put a pressure. realistic timeline to your debt plan. Um, I think if you do all of this, you should be fine. Don't just get carried away with spending. That's one money. And then, oh, then um, another point is Pay your highest interest, highest um, interest, interest debt first. Debt first, yes. Pay that first. The higher ones, you pay it first, just to reduce your stress level. Mm. And the main main goal is pray, pray, pray. Tell me about <laughs> you it. You need to pray. Seriously, you need to pray. It's, it requires because you go into prayer. It's really important. Honestly. Mm. If you have yeah. to change your lifestyle and all that, you most likely run into depression. So you need to pray. You there are people who are some people attempt suicide because oh, of yes, death. yes, because of that. Yes, yes. So yeah. Pray. So pray. Have mm. have um um uh, at least at least one good friend, one accountability partner, one person, accountability partner. One. If you can have a circle of them, fine. But at least one person, one person that will know the true picture of you. Mm. You know, one person that you can be vulnerable with because there are times that you're overwhelmed. And you, just and you need to pour it out to somebody. Yeah. So have that won't judge you, person, that won't uh, yeah, judge you, or take you, your matter and change. distribute it to the whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, if you do all of this, you, you should be fine with no time. Yeah. Yeah, I I believe so. I believe so because some of the things you mentioned were, were the the part I, I took and and I think that one of the things that happens when you begin to get your finances in in line is you also begin to get very disciplined as a person because you now learn to say a lot of no's. You are not yeah. uh, you are not going for everything not, you want. You are not going for everything you want. You're focusing on needs, yeah. not wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's one of the things. It just comes naturally to you. You just begin to have control. And then you begin to become more aware of when you are making decisions based on fear, impatience, emotion, and when you are making intentional decisions. Because your peace will be seized. You remember how your peace used to be seized when you were away. Just before you say the yes or the no, you just have a flashback. <laughs> and then you now, you know, make the right decision. I'm losing you there for one minute, but I'm sure you'll be, you'll be right back. Okay, so so basically, Damilola has told us about. Okay, go ahead. So basically, Damilola has told us all the steps that we need to take to be able to come out of a bad financial situation. And honestly, I agree with everything that she has said. It's important to sit down and look at the places that money that you actually do without that is unnecessary. I'm sure she would. Okay, you're back. I'm back on. I'm back. Okay, so um, I'm going to chip in something. You know, um, uh, while in that broke stage, one of the things that 
I just thought about instead of giving out my things to people that probably would not even appreciate or whatever. I decided to I have plenty of clothes, plenty to plenty shoe, plenty bag that you know they're still in good condition. Mm. My sister, I packed everything and dry cleaned and sold and got money from it. So mm. like people have things, the essence is people have things that they are useful, but they don't even use, they're just things in the house. You just leave them there. People have a lot of things in their store that they don't use. And you're in debt. And you know that this money, these things can turn into money, you know, that, that can help you. So why not just sell it? Why are you keeping it? Why are you hoarding things? That one worked for me. And I think I've, read, I've spoken to a few ladies that it also worked for. So you can try it. Mm. That's what I wanted to chip in. Yeah. So, 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 guys, guys, you guys are heard And, and I, I think everything you have said, we should be able to do to get out of, of, um, yeah. it's important to streamline your, I think you have two devices on. Do you have two devices on? Do you have two devices on? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, just one. Okay, so it's important to be, I'm echoing. I'm echoing, what? Here. Okay, so okay, okay. It's, so it's better to, so it's to first of all be disciplined because that's what self care and self love is about. You know, to be able to say no to the things that you don't need, even though you want them, because we can't have everything we want. You know, uh, with with you know some of the things that we even pay for every day, you find out that when you put that money together, you're able to get out of this whatever you're in, so that you can build wealth and actually really really. I have lived the life that you want. Even I, even I had to stop paying subscription for a while until I got out of, of, of all that. And, and now, I mean, I can do whatever I want, you know, or pay for whatever I want because I was able to do that delayed gratification for future um, um, benefits and all that. So, finally, what do you want people to take away from this conversation? And how can... People connect, with you. people connect with you. And what are the type of people you are looking for to connect with you right now? First of all, I want people to um, know that there's no situation you're in that cannot be changed. If you work towards it, if you're disciplined, you know, there's no negative situation you're in now that cannot change to positive. You need to have a positive mindset, whatever it is, whatever it is. Not, it doesn't have to be just money matters because money is the main cause of a lot of people's challenges mm. you have to have a positive mm. mindset to life you know and um be patient if you have started the process be patient and um what else and also then you should have a reward system for yourself no matter how small the milestone you should have a reward system that would also help you to motivate you to do better i think yeah if you can go through the whole video and then with these last tips i dropped ah uh -uh, yeah, in good hands. And always pray. Don't forget God. You know, you just don't forget God. Pray. However you can pray. Pray. Speak to God. And um, follow me. You can reach me on Niger Money Babe on Instagram. For now, that's the only place I'm active. Yeah, I think I'm also on Facebook. I'm more active on Instagram at Niger Money Babe. That's where you should check me out. Niger Money Babe. Me. Niger Money Babe. Yes, follow me to learn. A lot of tips on how to make money, save money, invest your money, anything money gist. I just say it in a relatable, fun way so everybody can understand. And um, the kind of people I would love to meet will be people, rich people that don't have money problems, people that are not that rich and have money problems and they're looking for how you know they can get out of their mess that um they're just um financially down really and you just need help you need help mentally people need to navigate their, their way out of debt you need to, uh, to know how to navigate out of all your financial mess that you're in and how not to fall back into it just follow me follow and people me. are looking for are looking the, um, safe, safe investments investment. safe, oh yes if you need safe investment or investment advice, advice. Investment advice. yes just buzz me. Send me a DM. I'm always there. Just send me a DM, you know, and I'll respond to you. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Jamila. It was a very and and thank you, Joy, for having me here. I've had a good time. Me too. Me too. It's been, it's been a very enlightening, very enlightening uh, conversation. Um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your thoughts on on money and and wealth creation and investment and financial intelligence. If I'm not taking anything away today, one of the things I'm taking away from here today is the fact that I need to be disciplined when it comes to handling my money. You know, um, I don't have to get everything I want. I should, you know, but, you know, I should, um, even if I, I want it, I should plan properly towards getting it. And then, um, yes, plan towards getting whatever you want. Yeah, plan. Yeah, so I can get what I want. I mean, what am I saying? I can get what I want. Uh, I mean, that, that's billionaire life, but I have to plan towards it. <laughs> We we'll have to plan towards it, you know. Yes, so it's important to plan, strategize, and uh, be disciplined. So you know, these are stuff I'm taking. And then of course, the loan thing. Be careful when you're taking loans. Your loans should you should take loans only when you're investing it in something that is bringing back returns, not for personal. Um, personal gains, needs uh, that personal are, needs. that's not going to bring that's anything back to you. Okay, so thank you so much, Jamila. So I'm going to let you go now. It's our one hour is up. And I look forward to another conversation with you when the cooperative takes Oh, yes, yes, don't worry. That one, I'll be the one to invite you. Don't worry. Okay. All right. So have a wonderful evening and Good night. Good night to everyone who turned in. Thank you for turning in. Thank you guys for turning in. Bye, guys.